glamorous <laughs> meeting ever. You're beyond help. My mother-in-law will hate me. Singapore, a young nation of almost 60 years old, is a unique blend of rich heritage and modernity. From its early days as Singapura to its present-day status as a bustling metropolis, Singapore has embraced modernity while still preserving its vibrant cultural traditions. Through its diverse and multifaceted arts and culture scene, Singapore showcases how various cultures and heritage weave and coexist peacefully across races and religions. Hello, it's Muna and welcome to Asia One Tries, where we explore different cultures and traditions from music to dance and art to food. I'm an actress and I feel like the arts and culture really feeds my soul and it's a great outlet for self-discovery and self-expression. So, let's find out what makes Singapore a melting pot of cultures. Go. We're here in Joo Chat and I'm tasked to take on an activity related to arts and culture but I have no clue what it is. Colourful, intricate and bidot. I am sewing something. Making batik. No, kebaya. I'm making a tablecloth. Okay, something that you can wear. <laughs> your feet. Oh! Oh, I'm making the Peranakan slippers. So Mona, the activity you'll be trying out today is Nyonya Beadwork. Ah, yeah, I was close. So the only thing I know about Nyonya Beadwork, it's probably something they, they have on their sandals, right? I'm not sure if it's something they wear as well, but I am excited to find out. So, come on. Hello, I'm Mona. Hello. Nice Hi. to meet you. I'm Melvin, nice to meet you. Sure. Welcome to my home. It's called the Intan, it's a home museum. Why don't you come on in? Let me show you around the house. Yes, please. This place is just magnificent. Thank you. Just tell me more about yourself. My name is Elvin. This is my home. It's also a museum I've been collecting for more than 40 years. I'm a Peranakan. Both my parents are Peranakans. Yeah. And I started collecting because I wanted to learn about my own culture. It's gorgeous. And so all of these you've collected for over 40 years. Yes, which means that every wow. single thing you see here, Muna, yeah. has a story. And I want to get in on all those stories. Please. First, I want to know, how did Intan even come about? So the word Intan in Peranakan Baba Malay means rose-cut diamond. The Peranakans loved European cut diamonds. And I call my home the Intan because when you visit me, you see, you hear, you taste everything Peranakan. The Peranakan culture is a mix of Chinese, Malay, European, and even Indian culture coming together. You see this very clearly in our material culture, in our food, in our language, and especially in our fashion. For the Peranakan lady, it has to be the Kasop Manik. I think the Peranakan ladies in the past saw the Europeans carrying beaded purses and eventually said, hmm, that should look quite nice on our shoes. And hence, that was the start of Peranakan shoes. Uh, the beads have changed over time, uh, the designs change over time, but today I'm so happy to see that there are people very eager to learn. Yeah, because I think it's an art form that's so intriguing, right? You want to be part of it, and today I get to be part of it, so you're going to show me a little bit more about beading the kasut money. The best person to show you Pranakan beading is not me, it's that young lady behind is my sister. Come, let me introduce to you Nonia Sherald. So Nonia Sherald, can you tell me more about the history behind Pranakan beadwork? They came from England in the form of handbags. So the Pranakas really liked it because they were shiny, they looked like diamonds and they're colourful. Therefore, they took these beads and put them on their shoes. What are some of the traditional designs of Nyonya beadwork? I like to think of them that there are three main categories of designs. If the Peranakans came from Malacca, there would be a large Muslim base. They like uh, flora and fauna. A lot of shoe designs came from Malacca would have plants going up towards Penang, where there are a lot more Chinese. They like the auspicious animals. So you have a goldfish, mandarin ducks, a pair of sparrows. And the third kind of design, they have blonde hair. Yeah. yeah. The Peranakans wanted to incorporate nursery rhymes in their shoe design. I would think that these designs were actually um, created and done in Singapore because there was a large uh, European base. Uh, they wanted to show their association with the Europeans. So you're saying that a lot of these designs, it seems like they're taken from 
different cultures, right? Is it right to say there's not one Peranakan design? It's more a mixture of different cultures, which is what Peranakan is, right? You will notice that all the beads are sewn in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. And that makes it even more difficult when you sew. If you choose a different angle each time, then your beads will have a different direction. Uh, your mother-in-law is not going to be very happy with you. <laughs> Or you're not going to find a husband. <laughs> Based on the quality oh, of your beadwork. This is serious, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going in from the bottom left. Bottom left. I'm going to pick up a bead. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to put it in on the top right. Top right. So Mona, you've seen me do it. Mm -hmm. I have a challenge for you today. Tiga, dua, satu, start. Oh my gosh, this beat. Is that a skill to... Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Okay, and then I push the beat down. Try to look elegant in the process. <laughs> I'm being as elegant as I can, Cheryl. Oh no, my mother-in-law will hate me. The <laughs> most unglamorous beating ever. Alright, one beat down. So you hold this up. Oh, okay. Yeah, until you get the proper angle. Ah. Ah, okay. You know, I can sew buttons. I can make friendship bracelets. It's not the same thing, right? Now you make friendship beads. We're some very good friends. Okay, I need your help. I'm calling for help. You're beyond help. Is this really beyond help? No, it cannot be. <laughs> no, if anyone can save me, it's you. I don't need to bring the needle back up to the correct position for you. Yeah, and then just if you wanna try continuing for you. Just if you wanna experience it for yourself. No, it's okay. <laughs> How long more do I have? No! Three, it's very lucky. Can do one more. Okay, okay, okay. No, 30 seconds plus 10. Plus 10. No, okay, you see, it's already in. This will this will count, okay, guys? Come on. No, okay, no, already done already. Ta da! Six. Not bad. Five upon ten. Okay, at least I passed. I'm happy with that. I'll take that. I mean, this is so difficult. So, Mona, seeing how great a job you did on this, we actually have a reward for you. Oh! Oh, Elvin! Yes, right. We've got authentic Peranaka Nonia Kwe Kwe just for you. <laughs> I feel the love, thank you! Oh, oh my gosh! So, how was the beating experience? Oh my god, I actually enjoyed it. I find that once I got started and then, you know, the focus was there. How do you think we can preserve this artwork of Nyonya beadwork? Well, the very fact that you are here and doing this uh, whole experience is really part and parcel of helping us to preserve and promote this uh, tradition of Peranakan. How do you see the future of Peranakan culture in Singapore? I think Peranakan culture is at its best today. Mm -hmm. It's so celebrated and almost everybody wants to find a bit of their Peranakanness in them. So to me, we are enjoying this renaissance where we are celebrating our differences mm. uh, together in Peranakan culture. You don't need to be in batik shirt, you don't need to uh, speak Baba Malay. Think, as long as you know you are Peranakan, at a certain point in life, that Peranakanness in you will manifest. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate your stories and you know talking about how you are preserving your own culture. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Bye bye. It was so bye -bye. nice meeting you. Bye. I love that I was able to really get into the artwork and the craft and appreciate something like this. I feel like it's a collaboration of cultures and that's a nice thought. If you ever get a chance to, please try it out for yourself. Come and visit Intan, talk to them about, you know, their culture, talk about your culture and find some similarities and discover a new craft work that can be really, really inspiring. Hope you enjoyed this episode and catch you guys on the next episode of Asia One Tries.